Alrighty, bring up my love. I my sincere apologies. It has taken me so long to respond to your videos on detecting evolution, but the truth is, they had to work through my unconscious mind that I had a lot of thoughts to formulate because they're inspiring. Your videos are inspiring in that regard, huh? Um, so, what you have done is you have taken the symbolic brain out nine god concept filtration system and distillery and into the god hopper at the top of the device you have dropped not a god concept but the theory of evolution itself a scientific theory and then in the glass alembic you have seen three uh, alternate uh, ways to look at evolution which are all fascinating i have to say um just just great um a word on science in, in the mind of symbolic, the mind of Nick. Um, science, you know, uh, I think that they, they, they glorify things and call them laws. Really, they're, they're just observed patterns that they then give grandiose names, call them laws. Um, but they're just observed patterns. Now, are those like really just the whims of God? I, I don't know what they are, you know, but they're observed patterns. Um, science devises all these laws, and then the laws all point to each other. It's a self contained, closed system. Um, and they say, well, uh, matter has properties really about the only property I can see matter has is mass that's about it you know and then you know you combine it but uh, matter itself though I think is a mystery science does not go, go below that level if you ask people what well what really is matter what is it uh, inherently in itself it's a mystery uh, absolute mystery and science just doesn't go there uh, I mean, nor should it really um, I don't think it can go there uh, but it sort of stops the inquiry you know, at this level of the laws pointing to each other. Um, metaphysics, religion, try to go beyond that, you know. So uh, so here we are in metaphysics land um, and religion land. Um, so I don't know what matter is. It really is a mystery to me. I don't know if life is inherent in matter. It certainly could be. Um, in simpler forms, maybe it takes more complex combinations of matter for uh, life or life force to express itself or unfold um, or it could be an outside life force uh, to dead matter but you know I don't think we know if matter is really dead and it jumps around a lot on the quantum level apparently um, behaves with movement and appearance and disappearance and breaks the laws of space and time and all kinds of strange things you know um, so I don't know but I love all your three theories uh, uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the well, uh, the other thing is that science is a mechanistic model. It's almost a determinism, you know, and so it, it brings up issues of free will. And is life, is life free will? Um, I don't know, because science is always going to come back to a mechanism uh, of physics, really. Uh, and so then we resort to metaphysics, huh? uh, or shall we say the supernatural? Is that the same as metaphysics? I think so. Different Latin root versus Greek root? I don't know. Um, uh, anyway, um, where am I going with this? Um, so I don't know, but science cannot explain personhood. How could it? I don't think. Uh, self-consciousness, it still hasn't managed to explain self-consciousness. I don't know. What is self-consciousness? It's another mystery. So is personhood. It's another mystery uh, when viewed in the realm of science and in general. Um, yeah, these things could all be explained by, not explained, uh, accounted for by a god. As far as explanation, I don't think you can really unfold you, you can't find a, a series of reasons. All you can say is, okay, God accounts for it, but uh, I don't know if that's really an, what I'm, I'm, I'm expressing this poorly, but an explanation and unfolding a sufficient reason. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, not that it's insufficient, but um, I'm, I'm explaining this, this, this poorly, but um, we could attribute anything to a God. We could attribute the existence of this to a God. We could attribute life. We could attribute everything. We could, we could account for everything. Uh, with a god, and yet we can essentially explain nothing. I like science in that it searches for explanations, even though its explanations tend to be mechanistic. Um, they make discoveries, you know. And and these things, I don't know if will ever be explained. They may remain uh, eternal mysteries. Oh, oh uh, that was really interesting what you said about if there is time, then there must be timelessness. Uh, perhaps that's eternity. I don't know. Limitation of the mind. I can't go there. I would love to go there. I kind of think we, we, we get down to sort of... Um, uh, natural propensities or proclivities or I mean some people I think are uh, I'm starting to believe that some people just uh, are born you know they have a sense of you know that the concept of God seems immediate to them other people are immediate skeptics uh, I'm not sure what I'm not sure how it works but I think a lot of this atheist theist the differences really come down to just 
disposition, you know, uh, as far as at least the approach. Now, whether something exists or not, I don't know. But um, anyway, I love this metamorphosis thing. I would love to see the evolutionary explanation for metamorphosis. I mean, that is the, really, I think, the most miraculous thing anybody ever sees is something turning into a butterfly, you know. Uh, I like your theory about how you could have some sort of hybridization and a force of hybridization. But again, I'm not sure we have to, to, to resort to an external force. We could have these things inherent in matter. I mean, we could even, if we want to combine it with the concept of creation, we can even say that, that God is unfolding through matter or, 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 you know, matter as a medium, I don't know. Other thing, uh, personhood that's not explained, uh, another thing that's not explained really is communication. I mean, you know, I think people, when they communicate, they change each other, uh, and I think there's some exchange that happens, some, some mystical thing when it comes to communication. Uh, rather than say we're all isolated external things, we send stimulus to each other, and that creates some sort of self-induced hallucinatory change. I mean, I, I think there is an exchange that goes on, which is amazing, because it's all done through symbolism, so what is that about? Um, what is that connection? Uh, can't explain that either. Uh, animals. Hey, uh, you know, animals, real quick, I did a video on this one. It's kind of a humorous video. You know, I'm not, I'm not willing to draw a sharp line between us and animals. I mean, are we a super animal? I don't know, but we're animals, I think, and, and I don't think there's anything wrong with being an animal. I think the animals, have, I mean, I grew up with a parrot. That thing look in your eyes, penetrate into your soul. That thing had a soul. I think the animals are just as cool as we are and vice versa. For a long time, they said that, uh, you know, animals weren't altruistic. Then they had purposes saving people's lives. They said animals didn't use tools. Then all those animals using tools, you know, uh, monkeys, apes, and all kinds of like crows and stuff are using tools. Then they said that, well, well we, we have agriculture. Well, there's ants that uh, farm, uh, uh, that farm, uh, you know, uh, uh, mushrooms. You know, the only thing I can see that we do that the animals do, don't do is we cook. You know, we are homo coccus, coc I don't know, you know Latin, I don't know, and I'm just guessing at the root, but anyway, we cook, that's about it, maybe that's divine, maybe that's uh, Prometheus kind of thing, I don't know, but uh, anyway, the only real sharp difference I can see is that we cook, you know, uh, horses count, you know, I, you know, I know that's not ab abstract mathematics, but you know, any predator has to be out thinking its prey, it has to be one step ahead, so it has to have certain rational powers of some kind, rational, irrational, I don't know, it's kind of interesting, I like your concept of uh, God as a paradox, you know, again, I think we have their dispositions, you know, I'm drawn to paradox, a lot of people find paradox as irrational, as contradiction, they reject it, or they feel that it is insanity, uh, other people find it to be uh, an enlightenment experience, I don't know, it's really interesting. Um, uh, have uh, continuous, uh, yeah, uh, transitional fossils, you know, um, uh, yeah, I, there's a lot of reasons why there wouldn't be transi transitional fossils, that, you know, changes happen too quickly, that's no problem at all, I like your Mandelbrot within a Mandelbrot in a uh, oh, hybridization theory, and, and then the replication theory, that's interesting too, I like that a lot, um, I, I wouldn't know how to critique it, um, uh, I'm still working on that in my brain. Um, set within a set within a set. That's what that is. That's great. Um, I gotta watch the time because I already made this video once and I went over time and it rejected my video. How dare it? Um, yeah, horses count. Um, hybridization. I really like that too. Yeah, the metamorphosis thing is fascinating. I don't know how that's explained, but you know they may have an explanation for it, which doesn't mean anything. We can have a mechanistic explanation for it. That doesn't mean anything at all. I mean, I'm content with the, uh, the, the theory of evolution as it exists, but I, I don't expect it to explain things like personhood, communication, or, um, you know, life, really. It, that, that is truly a mystery. Uh, I mean, the origin of life or what have you, but it, it really just explains the diversity of life. First cause, I don't know. Whenever we get back to first causes, we're dealing with the problem of time. I mean, when we deal with the universe, you know, uh, time is the, the fabric. You know, we, we, we can't ask the question what happened before time because it becomes meaningless. You know, we're caught with this grand concept of uh, uh, eternity, you know, and um, as far as a stasis goes, yes, I, a stasis would not move, but then again, we are locked again into this spatio-temporal mind frame motion, oh, we tend to view everything as motion, uh, and yet motion is dependent on space and time, an object moving through time and taking a certain amount of space, uh, a certain amount of time to go through that space, or moving through time and taking a certain amount of space to do so, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to hurry. Um, so I don't know when it comes to something that is beyond time, beyond space, I'm not sure, I mean, because my, my, con my concepts fail again. Um, is there Are there kinds of motions that are that are non-temporal, non-spatial, I don't know, uh, emotion, uh, I mean, there are changes that happen, but, you know, we could say emotion, so there's motion involved somehow, uh, sort of musical changes, I don't know, I'll have to contemplate what kind of changes would, what change could occur that's not spatial and non-temporal, um, but anyway, I have this difficulty in imagining an immobile God or a changeless God, unless that God is everything and all, but then it has a will, well, I suppose the world can have a will too, um, 
mysteries again, just mysteries on every side, you know, every, every side. And all we have in our minds is a lot of little models, a lot of simplistic models in science, uh, some of them more complex than others. Um, uh, but, um, you know, still, they're, they're not going to break through to the heart of the mystery of, uh, of matter or energy or time or, or what have you. Um, sorry to present you with one video to your three, but I kind of want to condense it all together. I have a lot more thought to do on it, and I appreciate your videos very much. And yes, all very cool. I like all three of your theories of evolution. I think they're really cool. Um, and, uh, of course, you're always creative. Uh, bit of a genius you are. You know that, don't you? Okay, love, I gotta go. I'll be thinking about you. Thanks very much, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.